and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity on launch in April 23. This month is an interesting one in terms of results. There are tons of variety, it was tricky to pick just 10 games, but at the same time there's not many massive mega hits, only two of these have over a thousand reviews, although at the same time, depending on your costs, if you get 100 reviews, which means roughly 4000 copies, that can definitely be enough to make it a success. So not necessarily good news for big teams, but great news for solo devs just like me. And this month the game that I ended up selecting as my number one was actually a very surprising one. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the the games shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. By the way, I'm currently working on my own Steam game called Dinky Guardians. It's a fun solo or co-op game with some automation, building, and defense elements, where you must keep the tiny defenseless Dinky safe from harm. Check out the Steam page, add it to your wishlist, and follow for that one. Alright, so starting off at number 10, with a nice indie sequel with a great visual style, it's Pass Part 2 to The Lost Artist. Here you play as a struggling artist on your journey to regain your lost art career, pick up a canvas and your brush, go outside and start painting. Meet the residents of this town and learn what they like, draw something that appeals to them in order to sell paintings and make some money. Then with your hard-earned cash you can acquire better different tools and canvases, use a paintbrush or draw on hard shaped canvases, and eventually you can buy your own studio and start drawing some masterpieces to be showcased in the Museum of the Master. My one big question about this one is how does the game decide what is quality? I assume the game is accessible to anyone, so I assume someone like me with no art skills can play and enjoy it, so I'd love to try this one out just to see how they calculate painting quality and what actually defines the preferences for the various residents. I really like the visual style, it's got some very unique characters and cars, even the UI has a really nice animated style. Finding success with an indie sequel is usually quite tricky, but this one seems to have done it. So far it already has over 400 very positive reviews. Then here is a very chaotic, super fast paced FPS called Meat Grinder. The name is in all caps, just like you expect. It seems to be some kind of mixture between Doom and Cluster Truck, definitely looks very fun. There's no cutscenes, no storylines, it's just you, a ton of weapons and a ton of enemies. You're constantly jumping around using a grappling hook to get the next vehicle, which can be trucks or trains or even planes, pick up a weapon, find the enemies and take them out without falling. It looks very simple and also very well made. Honestly, this is the perfect example of what I would encourage you to achieve with your first game, something with a small scope, really tight and focused. Despite being relatively simple, this one has managed to find quite a bit of success with over 100 very positive reviews. If you're into card games, then here is Wild Frost. It's a tactical roguelike deck builder. Rescue and recruit frozen card companions along the way and equip them with powerful charms to aid you on your quest, master a dynamic counter system where each card has a specific cooldown which causes you to really think strategically, you can keep an eye on the enemy's counter to essentially see the future and prepare for it so it's all very skill based. This is a roguelike so after each run you can upgrade the town and get some permanent improvements to help you on future runs, it's endlessly replayable with daily runs and challenges. The game has a really excellent presentation, everything is super well polished, it's out now and has over 4000 mostly positive reviews. Up next here is One World. This this is an interesting side-scrolling mining roguelite. Explore the world and dig for all kinds of resources, however it's not all peaceful. Your ship will get attacked and you must get back to your robo spider ship in order to defend. It's definitely unique in how you are digging sideways into a wall rather than down into the ground. The mines are procedurally generated so it's a new one every time. It includes various fantastical biomes where you can mine multiple resources to then bring back to your base to buy all kinds of upgrades. There's a nice risk reward mechanic, so are you going to go deeper and risk not making it back in time? Or do you keep it safe and never really go too far? It's a similar design to the game Don't Keeper, which was another great game. This one appears to be well made, it's out now and already has almost 3000 very positive reviews. Then for some VR, here is a massive release that just came out after an open alpha, it's Breachers. This is a tactical 5v5 VR FPS, one team defends and one attacks. Basically it's VR Rainbow Six Siege, which does sound awesome, plan your assault or defense, repel down some walls, set up some C4 to break some walls, coordinate with your teammates and execute the plan flawlessly. You have tons of gadgets at your disposal, things like drones, hooking devices and flashbangs, or some more technical ones like door blockers, proximity centers and trip mines. Of course, all alongside some deep weapon customization, everything from pistols to SMGs to assault rifles, all with tons of attachment. The response to the open beta was very positive, I heard great things about this game and it really seems to be doing very well. Already has over 500 very positive reviews, which for VR 
VR game, that does mean it's a huge hit. Up next here is a very anticipated one called Roots of Pasha. It's a life sim game in a very unique setting. It's all set in the Stone Age, so that really limits the kind of tech you have available. Basically just stone and wood, but you can still research and create all kinds of unique tools and objects. Now I have to admit something, I still haven't played Sardew Valley. The reason is simple, everything that I've heard about that game sounds like it's the perfect game for me, so I know for a fact that when I touch that game, I will spend 50 hours on it, and I'm always way too busy to have that kind of spare time. That's what happened to me with the game Graveyard Keeper, which is a similar game, and this game right here gives me the exact same vibe. I know if I play it, it's going to consume my life for a few days. Your goal is to be a good member of this Stone Age community, go out and find some seeds, come back home and plant them to grow some crops, explore the wilderness and domesticate some animals, you can go fishing, and if you're curious, go explore the deep dark caves, get to know the other members of the community, develop some friendships, and overcome hardships. You can play either solo or with friends. It's out now and already has over 500 very positive reviews. Next up, here's a funny and weird one called Organs Please. In this one, you manage a nice recycling facility, except what you are recycling is actually some humans. Visitors come in and you screen them in a Papers Please-like manner, make some of them your employees or convert them into resources. Deal with various factions, meet their needs in order to keep your job. The machines are all quite silly, you can rotate people around, turn them into drinks, or tickle them with feathers. It definitely is a unique concept with a dark sense of humor, looks to be well made with over 100 very positive reviews. Then if you'd like something with some automation elements, here is Magical Mixture Mill. This one is all about creating potions. First you go out to gather ingredients for your potions, bring them back to your potion seller, and set up some automated production lines of alchemical workstations. It's all up to you to balance the ratio between potency, liquid, and flavors. Try to get the best potions with the least side effects. Your customers come in all shapes and sizes. Some are hero knights, others are basic dungeon dwellers. They all need potions and it's up to you to brew the perfect potion to help them. It also has a really nice trailer with a fun song, very enjoyable, and the entire game looks very nice and inviting. It's out now in early access with 100 very positive reviews. Next, if you're looking for some survival action, here is Survival Fountain of Youth. This is a single player open world survival game where you explore or various islands, scavenge for resources, and craft bigger and better things. So the usual survival mechanics. Being based on islands is interesting. You can craft a boat and roam around from island to island, looking for more resources and uncovering the mysteries of this world. The world is pretty realistic, so there are no zombies or anything. Instead, there's all kinds of animals, from crocodiles to tigers, chicken and fish. Then there are also some interesting environmental mechanics, such as you need to survive the intense heat, the relentless storms, and the malaria-infested swamps. Honestly, despite looking well well made, this game to me feels a bit too generic, a bit too much like every other survival game and not too much is new, but it does have over 300 very positive reviews so they must be doing something right. And they do have a pretty detailed roadmap promising more regions, story chapters, islands, firearms, farming, housing and tons more. And at number 1, here is honestly a pretty unexpected personal pick, it's called Shadows of Doubt. This is an interesting one, it's an immersive detective stealth game. I say unexpected simply because usually I'm not into adventure detective games, just because I usually suck at those, but this one does have some very interesting mechanics. You play as a detective in this sci-fi noir city full of crime and corruption, you take on various jobs as a private investigator and earn some money so you can continue on your path to find a dreaded serial killer before they kill again, although this isn't a fixed storyline, this city is all procedurally generated along with all of its citizens. They all have a name, they all have a job and daily routine. The city keeps on living with or without you, the simulation never stops. You can use tons of tools and whatever you find in the world to help solve your case. For example, if you find a discard receipt on the floor, you can go and look at a CCTV camera and use the timestamp to find out who dropped it. Visually it looks quite interesting, nice pixel art, 3D and low poly style, looks great alongside the sci-fi noir aesthetic. Now I'm really interested in this one. I love deep simulations and the way this one promises to simulate an entire city with unique people all walking around sounds really exciting. Usually I'm not into adventure or detective games just because I suck at them, but the deep simulation in this one does have me really intrigued. These kinds of games also usually struggle to sell many copies. Adventure Stealth is a pretty niche genre, but this is one of the standout hits of this month already with over a thousand very positive reviews. So if you're interested in deep systems or detective games, then definitely don't miss this one. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity launched in April 23. I hope this list helped you see how the Unity engine is capable of building anything. The only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own Steam game, Dinky Guardians, and add it to your wishlist. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.